Domestic violence is as old as time, from the story of Cain killing Abel, his brother, and trying hard to cover up his acts, to so many high-profile cases of crimes of passion. This is still ongoing, as perpetrators of domestic violence are usually people who are close to you. You are watching Napped on the Move, and I am Imanalo Kiki. Thank you for joining us. Today, we will dwell on the issues of domestic violence, the very many different acts that constitute domestic violence under the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015, and why it is absolutely necessary for all the states in Nigeria to adopt this act. There's a lot to learn if you stay with NAPTEP on the move. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015 is a robust law that specifies what constitutes domestic violence and the offences that are categorised as domestic violence. Domestic violence usually occurs when a person causes harm to another and the harm can take the form of physical, psychological, emotional, even spiritual in the sense that for example where a couple live together and the husband suddenly says, stop going to church. You understand what I mean? Or don't go to this particular church. And the woman has been going there for like, since she was born. That's the only church she knows. That's the only way she knows how to worship. You know, so sometimes it can also be spiritual. You know, it takes various forms. It is not external, it is internal. But within it, every other form of violence can happen there. Rape can happen in that space. Uh, even within that space, trafficking can happen. Uh, within that space, beatings, which is physical abuse, can happen. Emotional abuse can happen. All forms of exploitation. This inheritance of women and girls. Other harmful traditional practices. Early marriage, forced marriage, female genital mutilation, spousal beating. You know, even if the woman doesn't have any child, is that the reason that you're married properly to a woman and then all of a sudden you think that you throw her, her belongings out? and then uh, some are even begging and, and this is something that is growing. So domestic violence covers all of this. The need for the adoption of the VAP Act by all states of the Federation cannot be underestimated as some existing laws still entrench violence. Now of course with the FCT the VAP Act is good but in other states criminal code covers some aspects but there is a lacuna in the law. The law is not adequate. It doesn't adequately cover all forms of domestic violence. For example, if you talk of uh, uh, even spousal beating, it's not covered. There is even a penal law that allows for wife battering. If such husband and wife are subject to native law where that is allowed, section 55 of the penal code, allows wife beating, for example. So you're talking of a criminalization of what is violence, and then you see violence being institutionalized by certain type of law. So there is a law that allows that. The law still allows corporal punishment. And this, these are part of what uh, laws that are no longer uh, existing in a, in a civilized society. Because through that, they are institutionalizing violence. Then you have, uh, even though you have a law against rape, it's fraught with difficulties in terms of uh, implementation of that. And it's uh, a bit just gender specific. It can only be committed on a woman. Meaning that if a boy is sexually abused, then the boy will not have any remedies. Well, honestly, I'll appeal to all the governors to domesticate this VAP Act. It's a very important piece of legislation and it will really help to protect 
men, women, and children. It's all inclusive because it's very wide. The offenses are very wide and it will protect all of these people because the, the, the offenses are clearly spelled out, the punishment is clearly spelled out. So it will be easy for the law enforcement agencies to handle it appropriately. It's very important for all the states to domesticate the VAP Act. Um, so far, I think there are just three states that have domesticated the VAP Act. So we have a very long way to go. The provisions for rape is extended in the VAP Act. Um, under the Penal Code and the Criminal Code, um, it has been a Herculean task for us as prosecutors to be able to you know, um, get evidence, ingredients or elements to be able to prove cases of rape in particular. You are supposed to bring all forms of uh, medical report. Even when rape is done to a child, a baby that cannot talk, it has been so difficult. Now with Violence Against Persons Act, it's not that difficult any longer, you know. So the law makes it in a way that if you're able to gather this evidence and you're able to get some graphic, you know, uh, uh, sequence of how this thing happened, and you're also able to, you know, lay a very good foundation and uh, push the evidence, you know, before the presiding judge. Once the judge is convinced, that person is going to be punished for that offense. So what I'm saying is that there's no more rigidity, you know, in trying to see that victims of violence get justice. And the offense of uh, rape under the VAP 2015 carries life imprisonment. Inheritance rights of women and defilement of children are also covered by the VAP Act. In other states, criminal code does not even protect women against inheritance because if a man doesn't make a will, maybe certain procedures happen if he dies in test state, but it doesn't give the woman even a full right and sometimes they fall under customary law. And under customary law, we know the position, uh, women, uh, women and girls are not allowed to inherit, uh, especially landed properties, land, economic trees, subject to customary law. Uh, so. The, the, that's a form of economic violence in terms of denial of inheritance rights for women and girls. And then there's another form of lack of child support, the abandonment of wife, child sexual abuse also is part of it and it's on the increase, including even incest. These things before we think doesn't happen in our society. And it's only when we speak out that we can confront it and break the silence and the culture of silence around it so that victims will know that they can complain and they can have effective remedies. Professor Joy Ezilo then shared some cases handled by her non-governmental organization, Women Aid Collective and Tamar Sark. The one that hurts is when somebody dies in the process. So I've seen a case of a girl of eight years or nine who was raped to death. It was stifled because they didn't want her to scream. And she was, she was screaming and you can imagine and she was stifled. You know, they held, the perpetrator held her in the throttle and she died. And it was such a girl with a lot of promise. And then her life cut short just in this way by no strangers. Again, it happened, you know, because the security man involved also was someone who eats with the family, someone who the family, the family feeds. We have had uh, cases, I've had a case of, I recall vividly, the woman who was attacked, acid attack by the husband. And I recall seeing her at orthopedic hospital, the bathed from head to toe. And she couldn't even lie down or anything. And she died three days after I met her. I've seen a case of a father incest on three of the girls. And why it was sad was that it was even a, a caretaker in the place where they were living, face you, I face me, who started it. And now the father joined. And the wife had to complain. And in between, she's so intimidated to withdraw the case. But she was the one who walked up and said, this is happening. And I'm not happy about it. And what about denial of inheritance right? That a woman who's uh, worked so hard with the husband, the husband loved and loved with the children on, on his death, that the family members can come in and take away everything and then the woman will fall from, you know, like if the children were in private school, they will automatically just find themselves in public school. They will be struggling to eat, they will be struggling to feed. All of those cases are heartbreaking. There are women also who are HIV positive because of the, 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 their status, they are sent out of the home. All manner of, it's just the injustice, uh, the injustice is so much. Highlighting some challenges, she then proffered solutions. 
all the discussion around sexuality we are always uh, shrouded in secrecy you know, our society and our culture we don't allow for sex education even if we call it family education are we providing the appropriate information at appropriate age so that people will know that it's not okay somebody is touching you anyhow that is you have to tell your parents and if they even if they tell you no if you talk i will kill you you will die this will happen to you that is not okay you must talk do our children have our confidence that they can communicate to you Parents need to have build that trust. You know, we need more father-son bonding, mother-daughter bonding, and then so that they can confide in you. That is what uh, we are missing. And when we chart the graphs, you see the numbers that have to deal with violence. It's, it's, they, are, they are great. There are so much. There's a, a huge number of people. And whatever you think that will have made news and breaking news around the world, they are all happening here. Let us not be in denial. They are all happening here. We just have to confront this hydra-headed uh, problem of uh, sexual and gender-based violence. And once we expose the, the perpetrators, and they know there is no safe place, no hiding place for them, and that we are checking the impunity, then we will be able to deal with it. But I believe also that we need to invest in prevention awareness creation, spotlighting cases, so that people will know, and importantly, where can they go for help? Because some people, even when they know, the assistance is limited. No free legal aid services and agencies that provide that are limited. Then you talk about uh, even actual medical uh, providing kind of the assistance they need, maybe some medical intervention. They will not get it free in many places. So we need to make sure we have these social services that works that people can also, when they, 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 they like hotlines to call, uh, they need to know and they can get immediate help. And this is why organizations like NAPTI, especially with regard to implementation of VAP Acts, and I believe there are others across states that are being provided by civil society. Finally, a word of advice for parents and victims of rape. Please always cooperate with NAPTI with credible information on where violence takes place. Uh, don't cover it up, particularly issue of uh, defilement of uh, children. People want to settle it in a family way. They are not helping the society, they are not helping Nigeria, and they are not helping the world by covering it up. Because the uh, child affected will continue to carry the trauma all, his, all her lifetime, you know. And uh, some of these children, you believe, cannot talk now. By the time they start talking as an adult, they have a way of getting back at the society, you know, in a very terrible way too. So in order to forestall that, to prevent that, we need to do justice by them. To the victims of domestic violence, it's very important that um, you do not put yourself in harm's way. If you have an abusive um, partner or spouse, um, take measures to prevent any form of harm or injury from befalling you. If it means reporting to NAPTIP, you need to report to NAPTIP so that we can quickly take control of the situation because we don't want to have more cases of women cutting off the genitals of the men or men killing their wives. We don't want to have that happen. So you need to report cases of violence to NAPTI and we'll take it from there. Domestic violence happens within private spaces and can only be reported by someone within that space. Please don't be complicit in your silence. Speak up and save a soul from damage and death. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, known as the VAP Act, aims to eliminate violence in private and public life, prohibit all forms of violence against persons, provide maximum protection and effective remedies for victims, while ensuring that offenders are adequately punished. NAPTIP implements this act, and for all victims of violence, be it domestic, physical, economic and psychological violence, female genital mutilation, incest, harmful substance attacks, rape, child abandonment, and so on. We call on you to take your destiny into your own hands by reporting to NAPTIC, and we assure you that justice will be served. Report all cases of violence against persons to these hotlines, 0703 000 203 080 2255-627847 NAPTIP Ensuring a human trafficking and violence-free nation Are you a victim? Don't let your family persuade you to keep silent. Domestic violence often leads to death where you will be silenced forever. 
Imagine that. So break the culture of silence and speak up today. It's now time for NAPTIP events. Don't go away. The Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Program of the British Council, ROLAC, funded by the European Union, recently held a stakeholders' consultative forum on implementation of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015. The forum had the following objectives. Foster clarity of roles and collaboration among stakeholders in the implementation of VAP. Obtain input into the design of the Sexual Offenders Register and receive nominations on credible service providers related to the Act across communities nationwide. Consultant to the Rolag project and facilitator Amina Sali who highlighted the advantages and challenges regarding the Sexual Offenders Register. This led to an interactive session where stakeholders contributed to the contents of the Register. Breakout sessions enabled group discussions on various salient points which were later presented by the group representatives. Goodwill messages were delivered by some key stakeholders, including the representative of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, major non-governmental organizations against gender-based violence, and the technical assistant to the Vice President on Gender Project, Hadiza Aminu. Chrysler Ankut of the ROLAC project also addressed the stakeholders. Representative of the NAPTI Director General, the Director of Research and Program Development, Godwin Walker, spoke on the agency's role in implementing the VAP Act. The issue of the Sexual Offenders Register is a requirement of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, which NAPTI is administering, 2015 Act. Uh, the Act actually mandates NAPTI to set up such a register in order to keep track of uh, recidivist uh, sexual offenders and those who have been convicted of those offenses. Section 40 of the VAP Act actually says NAPTIP should administer the Act. And I think it was deliberate so that we don't have, uh, we know that there are so many duty bearers that somebody has to take responsibility as a clearinghouse, as a coordinating agency. He also emphasized on the issues addressed by the forum and the importance of the Sexual Offenders Register. We are going to make it a database. Uh, that has several layers. Uh, so anybody who wants to employ somebody can go there and say, has this person I'm employing been convicted of uh, sexual offenses and all that? And look at the nature and the gravity and decide whether you want to take the risk or not. We are hoping that it will be something that we can share with the world or we can also give to the world so that anybody uh, who is employing somebody, anybody who is, a, who is a running a school, somebody you are employing a driver, we are employing um, a gate man, we are employing um, people to work in the orphanage and, and in the boarding house and all that. You should know the kind of persons you are employing and know whether these are people who have tendencies for sexual offenses. Some of the attendees then shared the importance of the forum in relation to their work. They also commended the initiative. The Stakeholder Consultative Forum on the Implementation of the VAP Act had participants drawn from across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. The Director General of NAPTIP, Dimjili Okadani, and her team recently received delegates from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, led by the country representative, Dr. Oliver Stope, at the agency's headquarters in Abuja. The country representative, Dr. Oliver Stope, stated the purpose of their visit. I'm uh, launching a new project that will be funded by the um, U.S. government um, to help uh, building up uh, the judicial research capacity um, of NAPTIP, particularly like databases um, of cases um, that make um, them also more accessible to the NAPTIP prosecutors, um, a bit of capacity building to the investigators, and finally, a little um, budget for preventive work, which is of course very crucial. Receiving the delegates, Dimjili Akadani spoke on areas of collaboration. You know, this NAPTIP, we've had a um, very good relationship for a while. I believe we're going to have a very good working relationship. Um, the databases of cases, it's important we need to know um, how many cases have been prosecuted, how many convictions we've gotten and all of that. We should be able to have database of every every activity that goes on in NAPTIP is very important because it helps us to plan better. The research um, thing, of course, the director of research is very excited, it's not in his head. That is an area that um, we, NAPTIP is really um, 
passionate about as well. Um, of course, investigation officers, they need a lot of training, the prosecutors as well, because if we do a sloppy investigation, then we won't even be talking about prosecuting anybody. So it's very important that investigators get training, training, retraining. They can never have enough um, training. She also highlighted the importance of prevention in the fight against trafficking in persons. Now the focus is moving away from Edo and going to Delta. And that is why from the beginning I kept on saying that if we focus on the state, we're only going to be wasting time and money. Mm -hmm. We should give equal attention to all the 36 states of Nigeria because human trafficking is endemic in all 36 states. And of course, if you concentrate on one state, they move to the next. You move to that state, you move. At the end of the day, it's penny wise, pound foolish. So I think we should put in our efforts, especially on the preventive aspect in all of the 36 states, simultaneously give it equal attention if we are really serious about wiping out um, human trafficking. Effective collaboration and awareness campaigns is one of the key strategies of the agency in tackling human trafficking. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has formally handed over to the Ghana High Commission four Ghanaian women intercepted at the Mozilla Mohammed International Airport in Lagos by the Nigerian Immigration Service. The Ghanaian women who were intercepted while trying to board an Egypt air flight to Cairo en route to Kurdistan, Republic of Iraq, in search of job opportunities. The NAPTIM Lagos Zonal Commander Daniel Atokolo assured the Ghana High Commission of the agency's continued collaboration. The Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs from Netherlands, Staff Block, and his team recently paid a courtesy call to the Director General of NAPTIP. And uh, actually, we are very happy with the cooperation with the uh, Nigerian government uh, in uh, making sure that those people with Nigerian uh, nationality that are illegally in the Netherlands um, can return to their country in an, in an orderly way. Responding to his request for closer collaboration, Dim Jili Okadonli spoke on the agency's mandate, efforts and challenges with some destination countries. The Nigerian government's response in preventing irregular migration and human trafficking is the five-speed strategy in fighting the human trafficking. We have the policy, the prevention, protection, prosecution and partnership. NAPTIP has established nine zonal commands in addition to the headquarters and the establishment of nine shelters across Nigeria. 13,345 victims have been rescued by the agency to date. 368 traffickers convicted. The challenges, the need for better increased information and intelligence sharing, the need for increase in number and frequency of joint operations by Nigeria and the Netherlands, increase in financial and material assistance to tackle human trafficking in Nigeria, need for more rigorous investigation of human trafficking cases both in Nigeria and in the Netherlands, more efforts to address the root causes of human trafficking in the Netherlands. She also enumerated some of the root causes of human trafficking. There are root causes that is making human trafficking to thrive. And if we're in denial and we do not tackle those root causes in the destination countries, <coughs> as much as the federal government of Nigeria is trying to tackle the root causes in Nigeria, we'll be wasting our time. Cheap labor. There have these labor agencies who are specialized in dealing with irregular migrants who are trafficked victims. In most of the European countries, prostitution is legal. And that's a big problem. And so you need to also look into those root problems there. Otherwise, honestly, all of this would be an exercise in futility. The meeting was fruitful as the two nations proffered solutions towards the fight against human trafficking. The NAPTI Enugu Zono Command, in collaboration with the wife of the governor of Enugu State, Her Excellency Monica Ugwani, organized a one-day youth conference with team Safe Spaces for the Youths at St. Teresa's College in Sukkar. The conference had in attendance over 2,000 students from different schools within Enugu North Sanitarial Zone. The NAPTIP Enugu Zono Commander, Comfort Aboko, and the NAPTIP staff, Isiani Amarachi, spoke on the issues of human trafficking and the various forms of violence against persons and encouraged the students to report suspected cases to the agency. At the end of the conference, affirming statements against human trafficking and violence against persons were made by the students.
NAPTIP On The Move is co-sponsored by the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Programme, ROLAC, funded by the European Union and implemented by the British Council. For more inquiries and support, or to report cases of suspected human trafficking and violence against persons, call NAPTIP hotlines on 0703-0000203 or 0800-2255-627847 or email info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at NAPTIP Nigeria and watch our videos on YouTube. We've come to the end of today's episode. I must thank you for watching and urge you to please support NAPTIP by reporting all suspected cases of violence against persons, child abuse and human trafficking. I hope to see you again same time next week. I am Emmanuel Alokiki. Goodbye.